welcome to Chop Busters. If you love terrifying tales and creepy stories, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and join us as we dive into the darkest, most spine-chilling horror stories. Ready to get scared? Let's jump in. Story number one. It was a typical Friday after my college classes were out and I was spending the night doing DoorDash. This was my regular routine, dashing on the weekends to help me pay for all my living expenses while on campus. The night started well, getting a lot of orders done and making a good amount, and then it hit a stalemate after the big dinner rush. Very few orders were showing up, and the ones that did, they were very low paying. Basically waste of time orders. But then after an hour of aimlessly driving around, an order came through that wasn't too bad. It was eight miles away, but the payment was well worth it. It was nothing absurd, absurd, but enough to make it not a rip-off like a lot of the other ones were. I accepted the order and ran into the restaurant to grab the bag, then hopped in my car and started driving. The map said it would take 30 minutes, which I think was the longest of any orders I'd done. Up until this point, most of the houses were right around campus because any further than 15-20 minutes out it becomes pretty much just bare fields of grass. As I got to that 20 minutes mark it became just that. Very few houses, mostly sitting far out in fields of crops and nothing else. The rest of the 10 minute drive was on this empty road going along these farms. Then I made it to the house. There was a dirt driveway connecting to the road leading through a large field and in the far back was a small house. Driving through the field felt very eerie, even though I'm not one to get nervous without reason. This felt different as I got further out from the road. The only sound was the low rumbling of my car on the dirt. I parked out front and got the bag ready, then left the car on, as I stepped out. The night was quiet and the house was dark, having only the porch light on to illuminate the outside. I walked through the unkempt grass and up to the porch, knocking on the door as I waited. I looked back at my car sitting in the dark with a field of pitch black behind it. A moment went by, then I knocked again, but there was no response, not even the sound of anyone inside. It didn't take long for me to realize the strangeness of the situation, seeing no lights on in the windows and noticing how decayed the house looked up close. The only thing that made me think it couldn't be abandoned was that I had an order for this address and the porch light was on. I looked at the light, thinking why would that be the only light? But by some odd chance, I happened to recognize the top portion of the casing having a cheap solar battery. It was just an automatic light that charges during the day and turns on in the evening, meaning nobody had to be here to turn it on. Just as I was piecing this all together though, I heard a rumbling sound behind me. I turned, seeing a car driving down the dirt path and coming up right behind my car. I stood there and stared at their headlights until a man stepped out. I yelled from the porch, asking if this was his order, but he, he didn't reply. He just stood right next to his car and didn't move or speak. I felt my adrenaline spike as I began realizing how horrible the situation likely was. The silence of the night only reminded me that there was nobody here to help. I was stuck in the middle of a field between an empty house and a stranger. In a split-second instinctual reaction, I dropped the bag and sprinted off the porch, running behind the house and straight into the field of grass. I looked back, seeing the man coming up behind me. Frantically, I continued running, and the further out I got, the thicker and taller the grass became until it was covering all views of direction. By then I knew the guy had no chance in following me. I slowed down, catching my breath as I carefully moved through the crops and tried to be quiet in case the man was still trying to find me. Eventually I made it to someone else's yard and from there I got to a road where I had enough signal to call for help. Police picked me up and went to check on my car, but of course the man was gone by then. I was surprised though because my car hadn't been looted and the bag of food was still on the porch of the abandoned house. But that could only mean that the man had other intentions, likely far worse than just robbing me. Story number two. This happened when I was 18, making the road trip from my hometown to my new college. I had all my stuff shoved into the trunk and back seat of my cheap SUV. 
This was not only my first long road trip alone, but was also going to be my first time being away from my family for an extended amount of time. So my nerves were reasonably high. Anyway, the directions I was taking said it was 600 miles total, which I split into two days of driving. I was taking whatever route the maps had me take and at estimated ID make it to the hotel at 11 hours and PM. But with possible traffic, gas stops and getting food, I knew ID likely get there much later. By seven, the sun was fully gone and most of the cars were gone too. Every once in a while, a car would pass by and ID see their headlights slowly fade out in front of me. But for most of the drive, it was just me. This actually made me really tired and bored. Around 10, I decided ID stop at the next gas station before making the final stretch of the drive. About 10 minutes later, I exited the road and entered a gas station. Being so far out, this wasn't a town or anything. It was literally just a gas station with a few pumps and a tiny convenience store. I didn't see any other cars on the road or in the lot, and not even any lights from any nearby houses or buildings in the distance. I pulled right up to a pump and got out to start topping off my tank, and as I looked around, I almost got jumped scared by a guy walking up to me. In comparison to myself, he was much older, probably 50s if I had to guess, and he honestly looked homeless. But regardless, being approached out here wasn't something I was expecting, and his short smile didn't make me feel any more comfortable. Hi, do you need something? I said, hoping he wouldn't walk any closer. The man stopped a few feet from my car and looked around almost cautiously before responding take the exit back onto the highway. I looked at him, confused, not sure if I was understanding him right. He pointed behind me at the exit I came from and repeated himself, take the exit back onto the highway. After a second I said okay, and the man walked off, but I was still really confused. The exit I came from that he wanted me to take again was a one-way road. So by his logic, he wanted me to drive on the wrong side of the road and do a U-turn back onto the highway. It just didn't make any sense. I looked out at the entrance road, the obvious one that I was supposed to take, and there were no signs of any construction or anything blocking it. It just looked like an empty ramp back onto the highway. As I put the pump back and got in my car, I glanced over at the man who was now just sitting against the side of the convenience store. The more I thought about it though, the more crazy that man seemed, just a beast sitting out here saying nonsense. I thought maybe this was some kind of trap or something, so I went with my instinct and drove out of the lot and toward the entrance to the highway. As I merged onto it though, I realized pretty much all the street lights were out. I slowed down, thinking maybe this was a construction zone or something. I kept my eyes focused on the road directly ahead making sure to be cautious of anything. But while I made my way through the unlit road, I saw only a brief outline of a figure to my left before a pickup truck came out of nowhere and stopped right in front of my car. Every door opened as four men jumped out of the truck and started running up to my car holding weapons of all kinds, metal bats, machetes, knives, and not even anything covering their faces. They just had this emotionless gaze like they felt nothing of what they were doing. I quickly started backing up as they got just a few feet away from my windows, and once I got far enough back, I suddenly saw the outline of dozens of people coming out of the shadows off the side of the road. A few even tried chasing my car as I frantically reversed out of there as soon as I could. I turned around and sped off. I called 911 once I felt I was safe, but for some reason I never got a call back. No update on it at all. Almost like they didn't even check on it. Ironically though, it was the creepy old guy at the gas station that tried to prevent me from even getting caught up in that mess. Or at least that was what I assume he was doing. Either way, I was incredibly lucky to get out of that with my life, as I have no idea what that was or what they were all planning to do. Thanks for watching Chop Busters. If you enjoyed this story, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Have a creepy tale of your own? Let us know in the comments. Stay spooky, and we'll see you in the next video.